Today, I want to share with you one of the most helpful exercises you could ever do in your business to get super clear on who you're serving, what you're helping them accomplish, how to speak to them in language that it will be vivid and powerful for them to get them to take action, aka buy your products, join your programs, come to your events. This is the most basic of exercises that I stumbled across while writing my book, How to Get Paid for What You Know, and realized this process should be applied to everyone's online business. I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. And it's something that I call the mentor map. And I want to break it down for you today. It's a simple exercise. I'm going to walk you through some simple questions. There's six quadrants you need to define. This will be a great end of the year, start of the year framework and exercise for you to implement that I think will give you so much clarity and what it will allow you to do at the end of the day is when you show up online, on social, in your podcast, on YouTube, wherever you are, it will allow you to speak with power, confidence, and clarity, knowing that you're going to reach the right people and filter out the people that you don't want to reach. It's going to make you stand out from all the other people in your niche who are saying a lot of things. You will be saying the right things in a way that's so powerful and so relevant to your target avatar that they are going to want to do business with you and not somebody else. It's something I call the mentor map. I want to break it down for you today. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 185 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Who else? Pumped to hang out with you today. I hope you have an incredible day. Uh, As we're getting to the end of the year, maybe you're catching this a little bit later. Maybe it's already the new year. This is a great time to be doing the deep work of thinking about how you show up in your business and what your business is all about. Not just strategies, not just tactics, but the the verbiage you use, the positioning you use, how you choose to show up in the marketplace makes a difference. And that's what today's episode is going to be all about. Before we jump into the mentor map and the six components of it and get ready to take notes, it is super juicy today. Um, I want to give you a resource to put it in your hands to help you launch your business quickly. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. Again, it's a great time of year. If, you, if you're if you ready to launch your business and you haven't, or you've been kicking around an idea and you just haven't launched a product yet, let me give you a four-week checklist to just go from where you are to making money in the next 30 days. It's an absolutely free guide. It's bullet points, my friend. It's easy to read. It's very action-oriented. So if you're an action taker, this might be the kick in the pants you need. Pick it up for free at grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you know I'm going to link it for it link it to it for you at the bottom of this video to make it easy for you. Click it, download it, and then please do it. It's it's just ideas if you don't do it, but I have so many students who have implemented this simple PDF and have made hundreds of dollars in 30 days. It's a, it's an easy way to make some money, put it in your pocket, but more importantly, prove that you have proof of concept, validate your idea, and then give you that motivation to get that business moving forward. GrahamCochran.com slash jumpstart. Okay, so here's a really cool thing. This year, I I published my first book, How to Get Paid for What You Know. It's available everywhere books are sold. It's an incredible book. I know the author. Um, No, it's a great book. It really, really is. I worked really hard on it. And and the reason why it's getting the five-star reviews that it's getting, the reason why it's helping people launch businesses and make tons of money, the reason why it's giving people peace and clarity about what to do next is because of the way I wrote it. And I had a hard job of taking all the things I could teach someone about starting and launching a profitable online business and boiling it down to the most essential while also addressing all of their concerns or fears or objections or, you know, people are coming from a wide variety of places. And it doesn't matter if you have all the steps, if you don't address the mindset stuff. And it doesn't matter if you address the mindset stuff, if you don't give them the steps. And so my goal was to craft a book, 50,000 words or less, that was both didactic and it's step-by-step. Here is literally what to do, but also addresses all the real stuff that's happening inside your heart, in your head, 
and be that perfect balance of the two. I think I nailed it. Nothing's perfect, but I think I got as close as I possibly could. But what's interesting is going through this process of having to write a proposal, do market research for this book, write the book, have editors at my publisher, like helping me reorganize stuff and think through things. What's missing? How can I say this in a better way? I discovered that the book flows like a perfect map. Like I got so much clarity on what I've already been teaching for years. Having to write the book forced me to get so clear. I learned stuff about my audience. I learned stuff about myself. I learned stuff about my my method and my frameworks that in theory, I already knew nothing changed. It wasn't new material for me to teach, but the format of having to present in a book gave me so much insight on what I teach and how I teach it. It to me became an exercise in clarity as a business owner, because it's my content, it's my method. And I was like, oh my gosh, all of my students need to have this. And like, not all of you are going to write a book. If I could encourage you, write a book, be forced to write a book. It will force you to do this work, but you don't have to write a book to do the hard work. What I've done is I've reverse engineered everything I did in writing the book and put it together into something I'm calling the mentor map. That is a framework, an exercise you can do. You can do this in an afternoon that if you implement this six-step framework, you are going to have so much more clarity on what to say, when to say it, what makes you unique, how to show up in the marketplace, so that you're clear on your messaging and your brand. It's it's so, so cool. And it's gonna allow you to be dialed into the objections your audience is gonna have, the offers you're presenting, the methods that you're gonna use. It's gonna take all the stuff that you probably already know that might feel like a jumbled mess and it's gonna give you so much focus and clarity. Here are five things that you're gonna be able to do by going through the mentor map. You're gonna be able to show people what's possible with your products or with your business idea. You're gonna be able to give your people a clear direction. You're going to give them clear direction, which they love. People are coming to you for direction. You're going to be able to anticipate common questions and objections that are going to come up. You're going to be able to motivate your people to take action, which is so important. And you're going to be able to infuse a warm, fuzzy feeling for your brand. It's hard to quantify that, but when people rub up against you and your brand on the internet, they're going to walk away feeling all the warm and warm fuzzies, which is really, really important. Make sense? So that's, these are the benefits if you implement the mentor map. So let's walk through the six mentor map elements. And each element, there's going to be questions um, that you can ask. And I want you to answer these questions to then be able to have so much clarity. Just all you have to do is answer the questions one at a time. And this process will help you really solidify your thoughts. So let me give you the six elements real quick, and then we'll walk through them in details. So number one is the opportunity that your business offers. Number two are the objections. Number three is the actual map. Number four is the method. Number five are the remaining questions. And number six, is the call to action. These are the six elements that we're going to break down. So let's do them one by one. The opportunity. So here are the questions. I'm going to rapid fire go through them so we have time to go through them. But here are the questions I want you to answer. So you might want to write these down or take this podcast when you go on sort of your planning day away, listen to it, pause it, and answer the questions. Journal out the answers to these questions. You're going to fill a Google Doc or journal with multiple pages of notes that are going to give you like the map for your business moving forward. Question number one under the headline, the opportunity. So this is element one, the opportunity. Here are the questions. What dream are you actually selling? What dream are you actually selling? This is like the most important question we need to answer in our business, right? Number two question, why should anyone care? Here's the dream you sell. Why should anyone care about that dream? Well, not everyone's going to care, but your ideal customer is going to care and you should understand why. You do understand why internally. I want you to articulate why should anyone care? Next question. If your audience were to follow everything you teach step by step, what transformation would happen in their life? I know how it is when you teach all this good stuff and there's no way to guarantee that they're going to do the things you you teach. But if they were to do everything you teach and follow it to a T, what transformation would happen in their life? And then final question under the opportunity section is what is truly possible for them 
in a best case scenario. What is truly possible for them in a best case scenario? Not all of your students are going to have a best case scenario. Not all of them are going to be as talented or as disciplined or going to put in the work. And there's a lot of situational things that are out of our control. But best case scenario, your ideal student does everything you say and it's best case. What's truly possible for them? Best case scenario. Answer those four questions and you will have so much clarity on the opportunity you are presenting to your target market. Second element of the mentor map is the objections. We just covered the opportunity. This is the most important thing. This is what you're going to be selling in your positioning, your website, your social media bio, all of these things. The objections. Now now what we want to do is do the hard work of get into the head of your current audience, your target market, the doubts they're going to have. So here's four questions under the objections element. Why might this not work for them? Why might your content not work for them? Why might your course or product or coaching not work for them? Because it's not always going to work, but why might it not work for them? What questions are they already asking internally when presented with the opportunity? So they come to you, they land on your site, they're reading your emails, whatever. You present an opportunity. What questions are in their head? That you do you think? And, and you will probably know this because you've either interacted with them before, or if you're newer in business, you probably are your target market, or you were before you had that personal transformation in that area. If you've lost a lot of weight, you know what it was like to be looking for weight loss training or coaching or products. And what questions did you have in your head when you were looking at an offer? What doubts did you have, right? Next question, where do most people get tripped up? They want to follow your process. They want to get results. Where do people tend to get tripped up in the process? Where do most people get tripped up? And then final question for the objections element is what limiting beliefs do they have? You're going to have to do some deep thinking about this, but I guarantee you 95% of your target market have the same handful of limiting beliefs might be one that everybody has, but they're probably two to three. What are some of the limiting beliefs that they have? What limiting beliefs did you have before you overcame them? Things that you believe to be true about what was possible for you that you no longer believe to be true because you've proven yourself wrong by having massive success. Think about those things. Answering those questions will help you articulate the common objections your target market will have. And this doesn't even apply to just stuff you're selling. Objections to even listen to your podcast or watching your video and objections to why that framework or that idea or that tip won't work for them. Because you really want to understand that so you can blow past it. All right, third element in the mentor map is the map, okay? So the first question you want to ask them or ask yourself is where is all this going, right? You're target. You're talking to a target market, a person, an avatar, you've got training material, a course, coaching. If they go through your stuff, like where is it all going? Like where are you trying to take them? Okay. There's a little bit about the the opportunity that we talked about in the first element, but where is all this going? Another question to ask is if they were to work with you or take your course or buy your product, what would the process look like from a bird's eye view? Okay. People want to be let in on the how before they're willing to take the first step. So for example, when I'm pitching a, a one-on-one coaching client, uh, not only am I talking about the outcome, here's the things we're going to accomplish together, the results that we're going to achieve together and the success we're going to help you achieve. I also explain if we're to work together, here's what it looks like. We have a monthly call at this time for this long. You have access to me in this way. We tend to interact in this way. First, I will do this. Second, I'll do this. People, they want to People want to be sold. They really do. They want to know um, what the process looks like. Um, And so if you have a course or or a digital product, you could do the same thing. When you add this to your cart, when you purchase my 90-day whatever course, 
First thing you're going to do is immediately be taken into the members area where you're going to be able to introduce yourself to myself and the other members of the course. And then in the first week, we're going to be able to accomplish this together. In the week two, you're going to get this. In the week three, you're going to get, like, just walk them through. You'll be getting, uh, you'll have a welcome video. I'll be sending you some emails right away that walk you through your first step or your first six things to do or your first seven days. Any kind of handholding projecting into the future, people want to know if they were to work with you or buy your thing, what's going to happen next? What's the process look like, bird's eye view? You don't have to go into all the details, but just show them that you, you're going to take their hand. You can take them by the hand and take them somewhere. And third question to ask about the map, like where you're taking them is, are you leading your audience well enough or are you leaving too much for them to figure out? This is a big gap for a lot of my students. They build an incredible course. They build the marketing. They sell it. They launch it and people buy it. And then we assume they're going to get into the course and figure it out. You really don't want to leave anything to chance. So, you want to make sure that you're leading them every step of the way so they know literally from literally page on the website to next page on the website to go to your inbox, get this, click on this, log in, day one, do this, week two, do this. Like You can't lead them too much. It's not that people are dumb. It's just that more communication is better. Um, don't make them have to figure it out on their own, right? So if they buy from you, if they work with you, what's the process look like? Are you leading them well enough? Okay, that's the map element of the mentor map. Number four element is the method. This is really important. We all have a method whether we realize it or not. So whatever journey you take people on, if you help them learn a foreign language or help them fix, you know, DOI fix their motorcycle or help them um, get in shape or help them record a song or help them build a business, whatever it is that you help them do, what is your step-by-step process? Okay, you don't have to have paragraphs for this, but could you turn it into steps? Step one, step two, how many steps are there? Like, and number them. But what is your step-by-step process? That is the second question, how many steps are there? So first start mapping out, well, first I take them to do this, then I, I take them through this process. It's important they learn how to do this. Like just, you, you probably already know this, but if you haven't already outlined all the steps in your process, high level, and then count them. How many? So you need to know I have a six-step process. I have a seven-step process. I have a 19-step process. Numbers are really important, especially when you know how many they are. It sounds concrete. Next question, what order are they in? And if you don't have steps, create them. People crave a linear path, and that's what you need to give them. So A lot of my students know how to get results for somebody. They know what they want to teach them, but it's all this stuff. Your job is to package it in a way that looks like a step-by-step linear numbered path. It makes you so much more appealing. If you just look at the personal finance space, for example, you've got a bajillion personal finance authors and coaches and radio show hosts, but probably the all-time most successful is Dave Ramsey. And there's a lot of reasons why he's successful. He's a great salesman. He's a very polarizing figure and a a big personality. There's a lot you can learn from the way he does content, whether you agree with him or not is irrelevant. But I think the number one thing that makes his uh, stuff successful is his baby steps. He has a seven step process that he's been teaching for 30 years. It hasn't changed. It's seven steps. Now there's a lot of things he talks about and teaches on, but he's boiled down his method into seven linear steps and their number, baby step one. Save $1,000. Baby step two, pay off all your consumer debt using the debt snowball. Baby step three, build out a full emergency fund of three to six months. Baby step four, start investing 15% or more in retirement. He has a seven-step process and people self-identify where they are on that seven-step journey. Oh, I'm on baby step three. Oh, congrats. I just got to baby step four. He's took the complicated, massive, never-ending, always-expanding topic of managing your money and boiled it down to a simple linear seven-step process, which gives people peace. He's a master at this, and this is why I think he's so successful. And he references his seven steps in everything he does. Public speaking, radio, interview on Fox News, all of his books, doesn't matter, the seven steps. So you need to create your own steps. How many steps are there? What are the order? What's the number? And if you don't have them, create them. Create your own method. And if you're really, really juicy, give your method a name. Okay, Element five 
of the mentor map is the remaining questions, okay? So after you've gone through your step-by-step process, what remaining questions will they have? So you've already mapped out, here's the steps. And if they do it, they're gonna be successful, but you know they're gonna have ongoing questions, like gaps, like, well, what about this? Or what about in this scenario? Can you anticipate what are those remaining questions they're gonna have after having gone through your step-by-step process? Next question. What nuances are not covered in your core steps? What nuances are not covered? So for example, in Dave Ramsey's baby steps, he doesn't cover how to buy a car in his seven baby steps. It's kind of assumed he's anti-debt, but he has to address some of these nuanced questions okay, here's the method to pay cash for your car when you don't have a lot of money. And here's the best way to do it. And here's the, I actually think you should pay cash. You shouldn't use a loan or whatever it is. That's a very specific question. That's not really in the seven step process, but it's going to come up. What about, you know, my my dad wants me to co-sign on a loan with him. Or what about, you know, financial generosity? Or what about whatever? Like there's all kinds of things. What about, Life insurance, like that's not covered in the seven steps, but it's an it's a nuanced question that's not covered in those core steps. I'm sure you have some nuanced questions that aren't covered in those core steps. I'm going to give you my example from my book here in a minute. And then finally, under the remaining questions section, what holes need to be filled to round out their education, right? They could go through the seven-step process or the 12-step process or the five-step process. You're going to cover some nuanced questions and that's going to get them results. But- there's probably some holes that if they were the ideal student and they were chomping at the bit to buy all your stuff and learn everything, what other holes would you want to plug and what other things would you want to address with them that would really make them a superstar student and give them ultimate success to round out their education, so to speak. And final sixth step of the mentor map is what we call the call to action. So here's four questions you want to answer in this regarding to your whole business. What is the next step for them after going through your process? So if that process is coaching, what's the next step? If that process is your course, what's the next step after the course? If you have a book, what, you know, they read the book, what's the next step? Like once they've gone through your steps, what then? What else should they be doing? What's the next thing? Number two is how can you reduce overwhelm? You know, the more they dive into this stuff with you, Even if they're getting results, more questions are going to come up and more anxiety is going to come up and they're just going to get overwhelmed when they realize how deep the rabbit hole goes. So how could you help reduce their overwhelm? Can you paint a picture of the next 30 days for them, the next 90 days, the next six months? What could or what should that next period of time after going through your process look like? And then here's an important question you need to answer for yourself. How can you put the responsibility of transformation on them instead of on you? You're teeing them up. You're giving them the framework, the method, the steps, obviously the content. You've created it. You've taken all your years of expertise and experience and you've, you've given them a linear path. But how can you, in your language and in the way you teach and the way you show up, shift that responsibility of transformation away from you is like, it's up to you to get me results, man. Now, how can you shift that back onto them? It's up to them to get their own results. You've given them all the resources they could need, but how can you shift that responsibility of transformation onto them instead of you? Think about that in the language you use. Okay. I want to give you an example. Um, I don't know if you have read my book. It's totally cool if you haven't, but this is how it came about in my book because I knew I wanted to write a book on how to launch your online business, okay? And I wanted it to be the definitive book on how to get paid for what you know, hence the title. Uh, In fact, that's how we came up with the title um, because I was telling my my publisher, this is basically what the book is about, is how to get paid for what you know. And I think my wife was like, yeah, you should just call it that. And my publisher was like, yeah, you should just call it that. I was like, oh, okay. Um, So I knew that was the thrust of the book but here's how it's laid out in the chapter. So the opportunity is laid out in the intro, the introduction and chapter one. There is no point in writing a book and starting a book, jumping into how to build an online business if I haven't presented the opportunity of the knowledge economy, knowledge commerce, 
how the average person who's not business oriented can make money online. And so I have to get buy-in. I have to show people, here's what's possible right now. And here's what's possible for the next 20, 30 years. And here's why it's possible. Here's a little bit of my story. And here's the, you know, the, the, the industry that we're a part of. And here's some of the big players in it. And here's what the CEO of Kajabi has to say about it. I mean, all this stuff is presented in, in the introduction in chapter one. I'm, I'm presenting the opportunity. So it's really like the, the first couple of pages technique. When you go to the bookstore, you open it up, and you look at the first couple of pages. It's got to grab you. You got to be excited. You got to be like, dude, what's in it for me? And so I'm selling in the first few pages. Like, here's what's possible for you. Like the first sentence in the entire book is you are sitting on a gold mine. How much more clear can I get? This is all about you, the reader. There's benefit to you. and You already have money that you're sitting on. You don't even realize it yet. So I'm showing the opportunity in the introduction in chapter one. The next thing I'm doing in chapter one and chapter two is I'm hitting the objections. Like early on, before I get into teaching them the process in my book, I'm teaching the reader to think critically. And I'm acknowledging, hey, you probably have doubts about like, well, I'm not an expert or there's so much content already online or if I'm supposed to make free videos and content, how am I supposed to sell content if I'm giving it away for free or, you know, I'm all of this stuff. Is it going to cost money? How much is it going to cost? How do I already have a job? I'm busy. I'm hitting all those objections in the first two chapters for two reasons. One, to show them, hey, I'm, I feel you. Like to be relatable, to be empathetic. So they feel heard and understood. And then two, to obliterate those objections. So they feel like, okay, maybe that's not really legit objections. And now they're warmed and they're primed. And so in chapter two, I give them the map, which is like, before I dive into the nitty gritty, I'm like, here's where this goes. Here's the business model. I explain giving away content for free. I explain lead magnets. I explain, uh, you know, the product that's valuable. I explain getting the feedback and the testimonials. I explain that it's built on generosity. I kind of show them, here's where I'm going to take you. Like before you waste any more time reading this book to find out if you're going to like it, here's the the spoiler alert. This is the business model. Here's the type of person it takes to run it. Here's my worldview on business. If you don't share it or like any of this, and you're not going to want to move forward with the book, but if you're like, this makes sense to me, I like where he's going with this, they're going to jump into the method. Then the method are the next six chapters because I have a six-step process that I teach my students to build their online business. And so chapter three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, That's the hard teaching. That's the six-step process. That is my method. So it goes heavy method, super didactic for that section of the book. I knew in crafting this book, there was a bunch of other stuff I needed to cover, questions that were going to come up that didn't fit nice and neatly into my six-step process. Things like, well, what about social media? Well, what about running paid ads? Um, What about... uh, Questions about, uh, I don't know how to get started. I, what about, I've already started, Graham, but I'm stuck and I'm plateaued. Like all these other questions that were going to come up, um, fears that were going to come up even after they understood the method and they didn't fit nicely and neatly into my six-step method. So I wrote um, three more chapters to cover the remaining questions, chapters nine through 11. And chapter 11 is the last chapter and that's where I address the call to action. I want the book to end. And really I had action steps at the end of each section, or actually of each chapter. So there's a call to action after each chapter to train the audience to be action-oriented and be like, okay, this book isn't just theory. This book isn't just a nice like, oh, that's fascinating. That was stimulating. This is a book that you do, not just a book that you read. And so I train them by including bullet point action steps at the end of each chapter. But the final chapter, chapter 11, is one giant call to action as well of like, Here's what I want you to do. It's like, you just got to start. And here's some things to think about. And here's some limiting beliefs to blow up in the final minutes and moments of our journey together so that you will take massive action and get started. So that is the flow of my book and the flow of any good nonfiction book that you want them to take action on, in my opinion. Present the opportunity, deal with objections, give them a map of where you're going to go in the book, Walk them through your method, which is going to be the the big meat of the book. Address any remaining questions and nuances. And then massive call to action number six. 
And so having to go through that process was so insightful for me. I learned so much that I've been able to take and then now use it not only in my one-on-one coaching, but in my group coaching and in content here on, on the podcast and YouTube. It's been so helpful. So here's the benefit to you. When you answer these questions that we just covered and you've got your mentor map in place, again, this is just going to be, imagine this is a Google doc. So running doc to reference, right? Copy and paste stuff, remind yourself. You can have the entire framework and an entire concept of your business in one place, your entire branding in one place. And that way, if someone like stops you on the streets, you're sitting on an airplane, the elevator pitch, um, you know exactly how to talk about your business. You know exactly what your business is about. You're going to know exactly who your avatar is, how to best guide them to get results, what results you're getting for them. Uh, It's going to give you so much more confidence and clarity as you show up online in your community, both paid and free. So this is what I call the mentor map. I think it's gonna be super juicy for you. And and this is a great time of year. It's always a great time of year to do this. It doesn't matter when you're listening to this, but it's a great time of year to sit down and ask these questions if you've never asked them and put answers, journal out answers all in one place. I guarantee you, you will feel more like a boss when you're done with this exercise as you move forward in all the content interaction, showing up online, and even building up products because you're going to know who you're serving and why they need to work with you and where you can take them. So simple, do it. Put a date on your calendar where you're going to implement the mentor map questions. And to leave a comment below, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know what was the most insightful section of these six elements of the mentor map for you that you haven't considered. Would love to hear below in a comment. Uh, And if you need, again, some practical steps to like, after you've done the mentor map, go launch your business, pick up my 30 day online income jumpstart guide. It's four weeks, step-by-step handholding, do this, then this, then this, then make money. It won't be gobs of money, but it will be money in the next 30 days if you follow it to a T. And I think you're going to be really, really pumped and glad that you did. It's free. Link to it below or grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. All right, my friend, happy mentor map creating. Go serve some people, serve them powerfully and have an incredible rest of your week. We'll see you in another episode of Wilson.